Hello, welcome to Youth Open Shop Live. My name is Ryan and I'm here with Dustin at the Ogden City Bicycle Collective. Hi Dustin. All right, so today we have a really special episode. Today we're gonna be talking about what's a bike? Like why, why are bikes? That's a pretty deep question. And today we're just gonna go through a little bit of the history. Now this is a weekly live stream that we do on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. And we do these live because we want to answer your questions. That's our goal, to be able to ask, answer any questions that you might have. Dustin will be on the Zoom Q&A here, and we will be watching for your live questions, whatever ones you might have. And if you aren't able to join us live and you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for joining us. We'd love to have you guys here. Be sure to subscribe, see when we go live. If you watch them after the fact, share them with your friends. No audio on Zoom. Sorry guys, one moment. Zoom is a very important uh, facet of our whole operation because that's the way you guys can join live. All right, so now that's set up that we got it on Zoom. Thank you, Dustin. He's, he's really just, just pulling all the stops to be able to help us out and that's really been helpful so excellent okay now zoom should be live now i will just have the questions up so that way i can see when they come up all right i'm back all right so today we're going to go over the history of bikes like i said if you're watching these after the fact you're always welcome to Submit your questions by going to this link down here. The tiny.cc slash ys live is our webpage where you can go submit a question, suggest a topic. Uh, pretty soon, do a lot of other cool things, like maybe even earn a bike of your own. So take part in these streams, and you'll be able to help us get bikes ready for donation to people in need. And then you can earn a bike of your own too, just like in Youth Open Shop back in the day. Some of you guys remember that. Man, those were good times. But we want the good times to continue. So be sure to do any of these streams and participate, and we can get involved again. So that'd be great. All right. So go to that link down below. We've got those, of course, in the links. And also, we've got some more links. We're going to go through today the history of the bikes, history of the bicycle. If you saw the thumbnail, it's got that really interesting picture of And that didn't happen. I'm, I'm trying to control it on the go. I'll get it. I'll get used to it. Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. But that one was rather interesting. That was arguably, arguably one of the first things that could be considered a bicycle. Before we get into that, I want to show off my friend here. This is a roll fast, and it most likely we think it comes from before World War II. And it's been, it's had a long life. Obviously not all the parts are from before World War II. Some of them are modern, like the seat, the tires, uh, these brakes here. But lots of the different things have evolved over the years with bikes from this, from this guy down here, all the way to today with the modern mountain bikes and all their cool things. So we'll go over that and we'll be able to kind of talk about the history as we go along and what parts came from it. And again, uh, if you are joining us, remember that there are rules to follow that we covered in the last stream. I won't go over those today, but they are. Uh, check out that stream if you want to participate. All right. So today we've got a really fun little start because the first one is all the way back in 1818. And that was called the dry scene because it was invented by a guy whose last name was Dreis. Now, it also had a lot of other names. It was... Uh, the story goes that he invented it because his son couldn't ride a horse because he didn't have a horse as the horse had gotten sick. And so he decided to invent a horse. And from that, we get the very start. Now you'll notice this bike, in comparison to today's bike, this is what we got from it. We got the wheels, we got the main top part of the frame, and we got the handlebars. And in a lot of versions, I don't know if this first, sorry, wrong side, this first version came with brakes, but believe it or not, brakes 
came on bikes before pedals did because it's important to go fast, but it's even better when you can stop afterward. So that's a really important thing to go by. All right, and of course, the seat as well. You have to have something to sit on. And initially, you'll notice they kind of, the story goes that it was originated like kind of to mimic what you could like to ride a horse. So the seat looked more like a saddle. And so a lot of the time, bike seats are referred to as saddles. So you got the bike saddle. So from that first bike, we obviously got the wheels, the frame, the top bar, bit of the frame, the seat, the handlebars, and then a lot of models, brakes. And another little note, uh, I just thought this was fun. One of the first brakes was called the duck brake because basically it was a duck bill that went on top of the tire. And when you pulled it, it pushed down onto the tire and just slowed it down that way. I don't know. I just thought it was fun because you look at pictures of it. I wish I had brought one but it's just a little metal duck bill that'll go press down on the tire. I just thought that was fun. All right, so the next up we've got is the two-wheel velocipede. Now, another fun fact in the, in the United States, this was in Europe, but it was brought over to the United States and it was often referred to as the bone shaker because now this bike here that I've got in front of me, it's got rubber tires, but the wheels, especially on these first two, and or maybe this one wasn't referred to as a bone shaker, but the next one was, we'll get to that. But they were just made out of wood or metal, most of the time metal, because there was hard, it wouldn't bend on you, it wouldn't break, so they just stuck to the metal wheels, and they didn't have fancy pavement like they do today, where they have uh, asphalt. No, it was all little cobblestones or very fine gravel or other kinds of forms of pavement like that. Uh, so you felt every bump when you were riding on a metal wheel. All right, so this one's cool because it was also the first instance where there were pedals. There was a pedal power two-wheeled machine. But this one is interesting because you'll notice that the pedals, obviously I can't point in front of the graphic because the graphic is technically in front of me. Oh no, there's just the pedals. See like, but the pedals were on the front wheel, but this one actually, the pedals powered the back wheel in the same way a train, uh, the train powers all its wheels with a rod that go went all the way along the back. So, okay, now we're getting to the next one, 1860. Wait a second, these numbers are out of order. I just realized that. Fix that in post. Nah, I'm just kidding. We just do these live. Time is relative, you know? 1869 for some people was 1860 for others. Who? Time travelers. But the point is, this is the one that they referred to the United States as the bone shaker. All it had was a giant piece of cast iron across the top and two metal wheels. And then the pedals were actually on the front wheel. And that made it a little hard. Maybe you've ridden one of those big wheels or a tricycle that had the pedals on the front wheel. And what that does is it makes it rather interesting when you want to turn fast because your legs don't exactly pivot when you turn the wheel. You've got to kind of do this weird stretch around the front of the bicycle. So that was not an ideal scenario, but one of the, and so these were actually kind of dangerous. As a matter of fact, a lot of people were fined by the police. Like they had to pay money to the, like they were fine, like they had a fine if you rode these on pavement because they were a little dangerous. They damaged the sidewalks in the roads, but then came the next dimension. And this one was a little better to handle, but a lot harder to get onto. This was the penny farthing, or technically the high wheel bicycle. And it, you can still find these today. There's a great video that uh, Global Cycling Network did where he went down and he, rate, he tried to beat the mile record on a penny farthing. And it is, or no, it was a 60 minute record or something like that. But uh, it, it's insane. Like you have to have a lot of balance. You have to be able to get up there because this little distance right here, can you see my finger? Yeah. From the middle of the wheel to the edge of the wheel, that's the length of your leg. So that means that you're probably like your, your butt's six feet off the ground you, sometimes. So you have to be really careful and not fall over because it's a long way to fall. So generally only very athletic people would ride these and 
even today. I don't think I've ever ridden one. Maybe someday. But Dustin, have you ridden the penny farthing? I, I, I think I'd be afraid to. Oh, he says he'd think he'd be afraid to. I am. I, I don't know. It's like riding a ladder <laughs> is how I feel it. Um, but yeah, so that's one. That was kind of the answer because they were easier to maneuver. But one of the big benefits is around this time, rubber tires were invented. Well, patented. But this time, you could ride on that rough pavement and not just jostle your brains all inside your head and shake your bones, like this bike was referred to as a bone shaker, because it had just straight metal tires. But the penny farthing actually had some of the first rubber tires. I'm trying to find my way in space. If only this were projected like a holog hologram in front of me. Um, but one of the cool things is this, uh, this made bike, uh, cycling a lot more accessible, which led to the safety bicycle. A few years later, they made the, the front wheel smaller, and you can find some really cool, one of the links down below, there's a really cool infographic of all the different styles of bicycles. And one of them had a really cool giant front wheel and a little back wheel, and you were like sat on it like at an angle, like a, like a chopper, it was great. So, uh, but what those did is it made it so that people could actually ride the bicycle to get around and do stuff. So, uh, but one of the things that they did is they took the pedals off the front and moved them to the middle and they put in a chain. So now it was back wheel driven. You, you steered with the front wheel and you, the power came from the back wheel. So that's how that got started. And with that, of course, you can see on this model here, there's a little break on the handlebar that goes to the front tire. But around this time, a little bit after this, the coaster brake was invented. And that was really cool. That's the one where you pedal backwards to uh, stop. And you see that on most kid bikes and cruisers. But the idea that you can pedal backwards to stop, that was huge. Because now, it didn't matter how fast you were going, you could just stop your bike. And I don't know, that's a great feeling when you're heading down a hill and you're like, oh crap, that car's gonna hit me. And then you stop, that's a good day as opposed to the, uh, the alternative. So what we've got going here is the, the bike is kind of the way we've seen it. In order to get the chain to run that way, it needs to have sort of this diamond pattern. And now you see the diamond form start to appear in bicycles. So that way that the chain has something to support itself against on the wheel. So that way it stays rigid. It can go over bumps. Now you've at this around this time, you actually started to get inflatable tires. So instead of just having a solid rubber tube or a solid rubber tire, there was a tube inside the tire that inflated like we bikes we have today. Most bikes we have today have a tube inside the tire. So that way you can inflate it and then you can ride along and just have a good time going over rocks, going over bumps. And we'll get to that in a bit because most of these bikes were meant for gravel roads or city streets, stuff like that. And another interesting note, before we go on to the next one, uh, in the 1960s and 70s, so like, the t how do I date that? Like the time of the Beatles, that's a good time. Yeah, that's a, that's a good reference, right? Uh, around that time, in, uh, especially in China, the bicycle was the most popular vehicle in the world. The, they had one that was called the Flying Pigeon, and it looked a lot like, well, it looked a bit like this bike. This bike is an American, uh, American make before World, War, uh, before World War II, but it was, uh, oh, I've got it over here. The question's over here now. Okay, cool. Sorry. Oh man, what's that question say? I can't. Can read. you wheelie a penny farthing? Can you wheelie a penny farthing? You can front wheelie a penny farthing. What do they call that in skateboarding? A nose ollie. A no, no, a nollie is when you jump it from the nose. You can do a nose, nose grind. A manual. That's right. You could nose manual on a penny farthing. But that often ended up with you on your nose. So, I'm sure you could. I'm sure there's lots of things you could do. Thank you for that question. That one's from uh, Leroy. Excellent. So 
we do have a lot of fun things that you can do on bikes. So this is about the time when bike, before biking was just kind of a weird thing. As a matter of fact, the first bicycle they usually referred to as a dandy horse or a hobby horse because it was just something people wearing top hats and dressed all fancy like the guy in the thumbnail did when just kind of going around and people thought they were dorks. Hipsters. Hipsters, yeah. <laughs> Hipsters have always been around. They're, they're just a force of nature. You can't control them. But the way this works is there's always uh, just kind of seen as like a weird hobby thing to do. But now with the safety bicycle especially, it started to be a real like way to get around. Like you could go to work, you could make deliveries, you could go to school, you could, um, you could have fun. A lot of this time, during this time, after the, the penny farthing onward, a lot of racers came out of that. And one of the first racers, oh, I can't remember his name. There's a really cool picture of him. Look at, check out those links down below. There's, we have a couple articles that link to like, uh, the National Geographic actually did a little story on the first cycling superstar and he was the, uh, a racer with a bicycle, which leads us to the next big invention, the racing bike. And this one was rather cool because for the first time, gears were added to a bike where you could change gears. So you go in one gear to go one, kind of go up hills and kind of start going fast. And then you have another gear when you're going downhill and you want to go super fast. And in the first racing bikes, you actually had to get off the bike, take the back wheel off, flip it around, and then you could go. So luckily, in that uh, later on, there was the invention of the derailleur. Now this bike doesn't have a derailleur, but in the image you can kind of see I've got I've got a little illustration of a derailleur. But uh, that meant you could change the chain from one gear to another, so you could switch on the fly to go faster, to go slower, to be able to go up hills easier. Just all this cool stuff. And a lot of the early racing bikes only had two gears, and for a long time the I believe that the biggest, the, the Tour de France only allowed, I think it was, I think they only allowed two gears for a long time, but I, I have to look that up. That one I didn't prepare for. Uh, but another cool thing is we had kind of, a lot of this uh, build up to the bikes was generational. So like, this is the, 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 the hobby horse, it had a child and it was the, the velocipede or the Bone Shaker, Velocipede and Bone Shaker. It's like a wrestling team up. That's not like names of a bike. I don't know, that's fun. But like, and then they, and then those bikes had a child and it was the Penny Farthing and then that bike had a child. It was a safety bicycle. But this one, the racing bike that came about, it kind of, it had a sibling more like, and its sibling was the mountain bike. For the racing bike, it was for going on roads. It was for going fast, but mountain bikes, it was for going off road. And it added lots of little fancy things. And to this day, uh, a lot of mountain bike co stuff comes from uh, racing bikes, but then a lot of racing bike stuff came from mountain bikes. So we get a lot of fun extras, like the tires that were meant for going off roads. You can get really big tires that are like this bit, like huge, like the size of my arm. Uh, you can, you get uh, suspension on bikes. You can get disc brakes. Ignore the fact that I, in my illustration of a bike, there's a, a, a caliper brake and a disc brake. Just pretend that the disc brake's on the back wheel. It, stopping is important. It's the moral of the story. So, but anyway, a lot of fun stuff came with mountain bikes and a lot of that stuff translated over. Now, that's the that's gist of like the basic bicycle, the one we know today, but there's even more uh, there's even more developments after that because now you can get electric. Well, it, during this time, there's a lot of history of having electric motors to help your bicycle along. Kind of the motorcycle kind of originate. Well, I have to look into that. I don't know much about motorcycle history. Dustin knows motorcycles. Do, do motorcycles come from bicycles? Yeah, uh, motorcycles, they just put engines on bikes. Okay, he says, yeah, motorcycles were just engines on bikes. Yeah, so Harley Davidson, a lot of those people, a lot of people were blacksmiths that became bicycle manufacturers, and a lot of bicycle manufacturers put engines onto their bicycles and became motorcycle manufacturers. 
So all that stuff has a big history in uh, in bicycles as well. So it all went from, uh, if we go back to the very first bike, I won't, um, here, let me, so let's go back to the start over again. That one, this one was actually called the running machine in German, the Laufmaschine. And because there's no pedals, you just ran alongside of it. And then... That's a, that's a strider. That's a strider, and we still have those today. As a matter of fact, if we learn from history, one of the best ways to learn how to ride a bike, which is a future episode, we're going to go in over how to ride a bike. Because, you know, riding a bike's important, but how do you teach someone how to ride a bike? So we're going to go over that, how to teach someone to ride a bike, and all that stuff, and go over a couple good tips that we have. But if you learn from the history, a lot of the, the best way to learn how to ride a bike is to learn how to balance first, because your ears need to get used to balancing. So you get on your bike and you push yourself forward and you go as far as you can without touching the ground. Sometimes it's like three feet, but we'll get into that. So I want to get at myself. But yeah, from there we had pedals and you worry about pedaling. Then they said, you know what? Rubber's nice. Let's have soft tires instead of hard metal tires. And then from there, we moved the pedals to the back, which made it a lot easier to balance. That's the reason it was called the safety bicycle. Another reason is because when you turn the wheel, you run the risk of getting your foot caught in the front spokes of the bike, which sounds awful. Um, I'm so glad I've never had that experience, but I imagine it must not be fun. So the reason the safety bicycle exists, uh, was called the safety bicycle is because it was easier to balance and you didn't get your foot in the spokes. Two giant pluses in my book, and you're not six feet off the ground. But the next one, we get the racing bike, you can switch gears. And this is a kind of cool thing too. As you get better at riding a bike, you can start to learn how to use switch your, how to change gears, how to use the other different fun stuff. And then maybe someday you can go down a mountain and that's, that's a lot of fun too. Uh, so all these extra things, they kind of help you do that. So that's the history of a bicycle. So any, any other comments, Dustin? Tell Leroy that the greatest invention is the wheelie. Uh, Leroy, uh, Dustin says to Leroy that the greatest invention was the wheelie. And having the power in the back wheel is actually part of made that possible. Try, try wheeling on a, uni, on a, on a yeah. tricycle. On a, try wheeling on a unicycle. It turns out that's how you ride a unicycle. Um, but uh, there's other inventions too. Uh, we didn't cover the recumbent, which is a bicycle of instead you bring the pedals all the way to the front again, but the pedals still power the back wheel. That's a whole thing. We'll probably do an episode on those later too, just, just for fun, you know? Um, but you sit backwards like you're laying down. I don't know, how's, how's a hand like that? <laughs> a little person. So uh, that's, that's kind of a brief history of bikes. There's obviously more history to bikes, but you guys go ahead. Uh, this is normally the place where we'd go through the Q&A. So if you guys ever have any off-topic questions, whether it's something we're covering that day or not, you can always include it in the form down below in the link that, uh, this link here. You can send, go to that website and send us a question. So that way we can answer it in the next episode. We can go over it in a little more detail, maybe even have an example of how to fix your problem. So yeah, uh, join us then. We thank you guys so much for joining us. We've really appreciated it. And this has been, um, my name's Ryan. I'm here at the Bicycle Collective. And thank you so much for uh, taking the time to learn more about bikes. And we hope you guys go out there, have a, have a good day, ride your bike, be safe, and be excellent to each other. That's not my normal sign off, but we'll go with it. <laughs> Thanks.